there's nobody that can explain somebody that was alive a few minutes ago that was not sick but suddenly is dead. Even medical science may not be able to explain it. They just know he's dead because the supernature of it has been removed. The nature has been left. So whether you're a believer or you're a non-believer, we are in a journey of the supernatural. And um, a plus, what is a plus for us is salvation. What gives us an upper edge in the realm of the supernatural is our salvation. And I'd like us to know that supernatural among others means the natural act of God witnessed in the natural circle of man generating marvels. The natural act of God witnessed in the natural, natural circle of man generating marvels. We serve a God of the supernatural but his acts are natural to him. But the supernatural act of God are supernatural to us but they are natural to God. But they, we see them in a natural face, in a natural circle. Thereby, it brings marvels. Psalm 118, verse 23. The Bible says that this is a lost doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The natural act, the natural act of God in witness in the natural circle of men that generate marvels. Two strange miracles happen today among others to validate this statement. There's a particular lady that I received a text message from highest night. If you see the skin, I showed some people today, the skin has been chopped in terms of the head, you will see the endoderma layer. That is the real skin, not this, the red one. You see it chopped. Not only that, growth was coming out of our body. Not only that, you see, when there's a, a, a when the a skin is burnt, the way it gets inside. Now, when I saw it, I had no... She's not a member. No. Just a member gave me, I mean, sent my number to the person that she called. Even when she was talking, you could see her agony. So, this the last night, I prayed for God, pain to reduce. This morning, I didn't have rest. I said, send me your direction. To even wear clothes is a tension. Going through a school, under the breast, growth, on everything. Even the boy I showed, some of them could not look at it. So, today, I said, send me your address. I just drove there. You know, myself and one of my brothers. Drove there, and I'm getting there. If you say the way she was walking, I see she's about to die. Steve Biko have rejected her. Because they don't know what to do again. They say it's heart failure. How can someone have heart failure on skin be peeling? Heart and skin, they don't, they don't correlate. They say it's brain tumor. Brain tumor, yet, the skin on the leg, on under the breast, it's gone, almost going. So, I got there. It was one lady, Dineo, that gave my number to her. I went there, prayed, and immediately I prayed. The woman that was walking like this, as if she's about to collapse, got strengthened. And from there, she said, she followed me downstairs to open the gates. Ah! It was a mystery. I'm, I'm telling you, even me, myself, I'm telling myself that I should be careful what I say nowadays. I'm telling you, I'm even me, I was scared. I show everybody, if you see the picture of this person, you know that she's about to die. I'm telling you, that was what prompted me, that they want to kill this woman. She's no father, no mother. And she only has one child. And her life is just there. But to the glory of God, do you know what? This afternoon, our, our, our friend sister from Brazil, 
had to send me a message. The pastor, thank you very much because they know the state of our health. I received a message from Brazil. I said, I've never, I don't know anybody in Brazil. But you see, that miracle changed the face of it. That lady in Brazil, I said, please, you need to pray for me too. Now, there's one lady, another one entirely, to let you know that supernatural is the natural act of God, but the generate marvels in the midst of men. There's a lady, that one I think is a member, I don't know if she's a member or not. She, they've been in the hospital for the past five, six days, taking drip. Now, she mistakenly told the family members that she's going to France for a holiday. Immediately she told them in, at home, she started having pain on the leg, and now the leg could not move again. And from there, her life got caged. They got to hospital. Hospital doctors were confused. They said they don't know what to do. That nothing is happening to her. Nothing is happening to her, but she can't walk. And her life was stagnated. So one of our deacons gave my number to the person. So they came to church today to see him. In fact, some people saw her the way she was limping. Limping. After we prayed by the grace of God, the arrow got removed. She started running. On the what doctors were confused about. Supernatural talks about the natural act of God. Now Na it's natural with God. Two weeks ago, somebody came to my office with her husband. I said, Madam, you are pregnant now. <laughs> she laughed. <laughs> okay. Today she came. She said, Pastor, my husband said you're a witch. Because now they went to do tests. Now she's pregnant. And she was not pregnant. And she was not expecting to be pregnant. <laughs> Me, I just said it. You are pregnant. If I tell you are pregnant, just accept it. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Whether you hate it or not. <laughs> Except you remove your stomach. But what I'm saying is, it is natural with God. God does not struggle to do miracle. Mm -mm. That is his natural estate. That is his class. And that is what is expected of every son and daughter of God. That's what I'm driving at. It's supposed to be natural with us. Not that you have to be praying that Lord help me to do miracle. Eh, eh. You don't pray to do miracle. You don't pray to think like a human being. Because that's who you are. You don't get up now and say, I want to walk. And I do like this. Ah. They know that no, something has entered your head. Because a normal human being will not use air to walk. In the same way, a normal human being will walk with the leg. In the same way, a normal spirit being will do miracles. Glory to God. May the Lord transform us to the realm of the supernatural. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. You see, that's why I pity people who, who, go to, who go to church, to, from church to church, to look for miracles. Because, you see, miracles are everywhere. But the one, they are genuine ones and they are fake ones. They are genuine sources and they are fake sources. May we be enlisted among these genuine sons of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Operate in supernatural. Operating in supernatural is working in the supernatural. Working in supernatural is living in the supernatural. Some of us, we stay where we work, we stay eight hours, ten hours. We pro which means we practically live in those places. If you stay in the place for 8 hours, 10 hours, or 12 hours a day, which means you are practically living there. Because half, half of your day is in that place. So you are living there. So operating where you work is where you live. Where you work is where you live. So where you operate is where you work. Where you walk is where you live. And as a result, everything supernatural it becomes a miracle. Because now, if you are operating supernatural, I mean, in supernatural, therefore, you are walking supernatural. Therefore, you are living in supernatural. Which means everything about to become a miracle. Because supernatural talks about a miracle. Remember, supernatural is above man understanding. So when it happens, it becomes, a, it becomes something that everybody gets marveled about. And from tonight, your life will become a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, we shall be focusing on engaging the mystery of divine presence. Remember yesterday, we focused on the mystery of fasting and prayers. Saying, if you don't fast, you will soon fast. If you don't fast now, you will soon fast. I told one of the people I pray for today, I said, you see, you are free now, 
but an attack is still coming. I told the person point blank. I said, because you see, when your riches are increasing, be expecting increasing attacks. Because the devil doesn't want you to go higher. And that's why it's being said, time and again, for every new level, there's a new devil. So if you enter a new level, you must experience a new dimension of evil. But if you are well equipped, let them be one million. Like I said in one of the services, by the grace of God, I was into one of the messages. I said, one million goats cannot harass one lion. One million goats. They can't harass one lion. Why? Because even the appearance of a lion will scare each of the goats one by one. None of them will want to be a victim. Not one. So it is the fear of, ah, I must not be, that will chase all of them. So one million goats cannot scare one lion. Not because if they come together, they can't kill one lion. But because of the fact that I don't want to be a victim. No, it must not be me. It must not be me. And it must not be me is the reason why they all run. To even hear the roaring of a lion is enough to scare every goat around. Saints, you carry the lion of the tribe of Judah. But not without fasting and prayer. It is fasting and prayer that helps us to see God in a deeper way. It's what empowers our understanding. Because, you see, authority and power comes with revelation. Authority and power comes with revelation. Author there is no challenge that comes my way by the grace of God that will not first say relax. No matter what, relax first. Relax first. No matter what you say. If it's not bigger than God, it's smaller than me. If it's not bigger than God, it's smaller than I am. Because I carry God and everything that compares with God is smaller than God. So if it's not bigger than God, it's smaller than me. And if it's smaller than me, I can trample on my feet. Under my feet. Glory to God. So this is what empowers our dominion. This is what empowers our declarations. And this is what gives us victory at ease. So let's ensure that we don't... You see... When people, when we say, well, let's fast Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays, and people say, no, ah, pastor, I broke that fast around 12. Fine. A time is coming when challenges will come. You, they will say, fast for three days. They say, no, I have to fast for 40 days. This is what I'm going to do. Because now the challenges are now beyond you. Don't fast by force. Fast by choice. The fast that you fast by choice is what causes you to escape the fasting by force. But those who don't fast by choice, they will get to the point of fasting by force. Tonight, the Lord will change our understanding to a greater one in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, engaging the mystery of divine presence. Divine presence usually provokes the supernatural. Divine presence usually provokes the supernatural. Psalm 114 verse 1 to 8, 1 to 5. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. Judah was a sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams and the little hills like lambs. What held thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Now, if you look at verse 6, it talk, talks about God's presence. God's presence. God's presence, God's presence, God's presence. But I'd like you to take note of one, I mean, one or two verses. He said, When Israel was out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it. Now, who was being referred to here? His presence. Judah was his sanctuary. Remember, Judah means praise. And the Bible says, Thou that are holy, thou that inhabitest in the praise of your people. Psalm 22 verse 3. So, Judah is a sanctuary. God lives in praise. Israel is dominion. And the Bible says, Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams. It was talking about God's majestic presence. When you carry God's presence, 
you dominate every form of harassment from the devil. When you carry God's presence, you supernaturally generate testimonies. By the grace of God, I was privileged to go to, you know, Preacher not to see some people yesterday. And I pray for some people by the grace of God. We were up to like 63. And a number of them, I use them as a point of contact to their mothers and parents that are sick. One in Nigeria, one in Italy, one in Italy different one like that. And by the grace of God, as I pray with them, I said, Go and call your mother now, now, now. In fact, yesterday night, when I was driving home, one of them sent me a message. He said, Pastor, my mother was having high blood pressure. And immediately you prayed. He said, I went to check my mother. The mother called back. He said, the blood pressure went down on the spot. Saints, supernatural is real than the natural. The supernatural is more real than the natural. And let me explain. When doctors say you are sick, and you refuse to accept that you are sick, you automatically get healed. In the natural realm, they see sickness. In the supernatural realm, you see health. Then the health becomes your portion. That is where many of us are operating from, by the grace of God. Yes, they say, yo, you are sick. But you say, no, I'm healed. Because there's no sickness in my dictionary. Therefore, I can be sick. So when you stand on the supernatural, it becomes more real to the physical than the physical. So, we need to understand that his presence is enough to provoke the supernatural. That is, his presence will help us to operate in a dimension beyond your expectation. You operate in a class that is beyond the human understanding. You do what others will look like. Is it possible? You say, yeah, it's possible. Not by me, but by the one in me. Not by me, but by the one that is operating in me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Luke 10 verse 1. The Bible says, after these, things, the, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face to into every city and place whither he himself would come. He sent them two by two to go and do what? To carry out wonders. And if you look at the latter verse, they were healing the sick. It was later. later verse 17. The Bible says that even demons were subject to us in your name. Verse 19 now says, no, don't bother. I've given you power to cherubim, serpent, and scorpion. Where is the power? His presence. Where is the power? His presence. When God is present, every enemy is silent. When God is present, I mean majestically present. I mean manifestingly present. I mean practically present. Not just I'm a, body, I'm a believer. I'm a born again. I'm a believer. Many believers are suffering from what unbelievers are not suffering from. Why? Because they are not here, they are not there. When you are not here, you are not there. You lack God. And you have the devil. Here and there is the reason why many are in captivity. They are not really in God. They are not in the devil. And you see, there is no dual operation with God. You are either for God or against God. So, if you look at it very well, here and there Christians, they lack God's manifest presence. Look one Christians, they lack God's manifest presence because it's either God of all or God not at all. It's either the God of all or God not at all. From today, we shall not lack his presence. Say a louder amen. amen. Say a stronger amen. amen. God's presence empowers believers to operate in the supernatural. He empowers us. When you look at it, in book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, talking about the story of David, the Bible says that Saul said, come, let me give you this, um, you know, this armor and wear it. <sighs> David wore it. I have not tried this thing before. I don't, have, I don't know about this. But you see, no, I have not tested it. I have not worked with this. But I have something that is more than this. God's presence. It took five smooth stones. Jesus in prophecy. And just one of it. Let's assume it's J. And that was all. It, the presence of God empowers us to operate in the supernatural. Not because you want to. 
It works in you. Not because you desire to. It just comes. Now, when you spray, hear this. When you spray perfume in your body, you don't pray perfume to smell. Anywhere you enter, they know you have entered. When you spray perfume, you don't pray it. Father, let this perfume to smell. Father, uh, you don't have job. You don't pray perfume to smell. Because when you have it, it smells by itself. When you carry God's presence, you don't pray it. It shows. It reflects. The aura of the glory shine forth. Somebody came here, one white woman. She came here on Sunday. I read that testimony to two people in my office. She said, I've been going to churches. She said, I've been going to churches, but they all look like fake, according to her. He said, but when I came on Sunday, I could feel God. I, I, he said, this is the first time in a very long time that I felt God's presence. That I knew God is here. He said, but now, after Sunday, I, I miss it again. He said, Pastor, please help me get back to God. That's why I keep saying, don't look for miracles. Some are only happy in church. They are sad at home. Some are only happy, you know, because they don't have it. If you don't have it, you can't enjoy him. If you don't have his presence, you can't enjoy his presence. Some are only happy in God's presence. I mean, in church, at home, they don't have his presence. That's why we need to be a carrier of his presence. That's how we can enjoy the empowerment in his name. Empowerment in his glory. Exodus 33, verse 14. Exodus 33 verse 14. The Bible says, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up ends. That is, if your presence will not go with us, we are going nowhere. His presence is the reason for the difference in your life. His presence is the reason why people will look at you once and look at you again. His presence is the reason why when you have been rejected, you become a celebrity. His presence will always make a difference. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and disease departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. From the body of Paul, from his body, from his body, he was carrying God's presence. At 26, 2015, Somebody was, um, somebody was, uh, came to my office. I was eating almond nut, almond nut. I was in Nigeria that time. As I was eating, this girl was having, I forgot it, she was having a growth. Yeah, a growth in her body. And I said, it's this. I just gave her one. And one that I gave her caused the growth to disappear. Just like that. No prayer. No prayer. One woman, uh, she was barren. She came to my office. Okay, I called Barry people to come out in 2015, that time. Not here. And I prayed for them in church. So she got pregnant without sex. So now, she now went to the hospital. They said she has um, fibro. Uh, she has fibroid. I said, I thought the report in her presence and true data. That was all. The baby will be two or three this year. Or really two or three. They're about. I think it's two. Now, what I'm saying is this. God's presence will always generate power. You don't, need to ex you don't need to explain his presence when you genuinely carry it. You don't need to explain it. It, 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 it oozes out by itself. It oozes out by itself. So let us crave for his presence. We automatically carry his power. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Also, understand that divine presence usually accompanies anyone on the go for Christ. When you are a soul winner, like I said time, some time ago, you are a God carrier. Why are you a God carrier? What you are preaching is Jesus. You can't carry Jesus on your mouth and lack Jesus around you. You can't be preaching Jesus and not practically exhibit Jesus. You cannot be talking about Jesus and lack the aura of Jesus' glory or his presence. Matthew 28 verse 18 
and just came and spake unto them saying all power is given to, unto me in heaven and earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world when you are a carrier of the gospel you are a carrier of his presence and when you are a carrier of his presence you automatically manifest his power because the bible says he will not deny himself he will not leave. the bible says he will not leave my soul in hell neither will he suffer his only one to see corruption so he will not he will not leave you alone if you talk about him you will surely carry his spirit remember the bible says in john 63 the bible says that the word i speak unto you their spirit and their life john 6 63 the flesh profited nothing but the words i speak unto you they are spirit and they are alive so when you are speaking about him his spirit is living inside you because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can't preach him if you don't have him you can't talk about him if you don't carry him you can't even manifest him if he's not inside you so when you preach jesus you carry jesus's power when you speak about Jesus, you exhibit his presence naturally. Naturally. Your, 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 your conversations, your appearance, your look will always prove that you are not alone. Tonight, everywhere we go for evangelism, his presence shall go with us. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. It was through evangelism, I ever started praying deliverance prayer. 2003. 2003 or 2002. It was Ishabo area in Abekuta. I went for evangelism. And as I was doing evangelism, I saw one girl in a neighbor, in where I was in a neighbor, someone I know went there to pray for the person to evangelize. And I said, ah. And I started talking to the person. And as I was talking, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. She has an evil spirit. I've never prayed any deliverance prayer in my life before that time. So I, I, pray, I, I asked her, I said, you have an evil spirit? He said, no, 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 no. I said, I will call down fire. And she said, ah. Eventually, she opened up. She has my evil spirit. That time, it was strange to me. I've never seen it in my life that I will pray for somebody. So I said, okay, let's go to one flat. Somebody's house, not my own house. One room. As I was praying, in my mind, I was in between. I said, God, marine, half human, half fish. I was, my brain was calculating many things. That if she becomes fish, will I caught her? Will I, what will happen? You know, I was much, much younger than this. I said, Kai. As I was praying, my brain was calculating. I was praying, I was calculating. So when she said to me like this, ah, I said, correct. <laughs> I've entered this one today. Only me. <laughs> you know, I've never seen it in my life. I, it's, it, I've never been direct, me and the witch or whatever. I've never. <laughs> you are laughing today. It was not funny that day. I was. But I said, God, I was preaching the gospel because only Ghost was the one that told me, cast out the devil. Okay, fine. And as I was praying, you were doing, eventually, to the glory of God, by the grace of God, she didn't turn to a fish. I said, thank God. But she was not crying. I said, why are you crying? He said, because I have three kids inside the water. And the guy, I mean, the spirit that slept with me was walking out of me. I said, you okay? You are crying, the devil is leaving. Me, I'm, I was excited that you are free. Say said, you are crying. But the testimony is this. I was preaching the gospel and the power was available. I was preaching the gospel, the power was available. The remaining story, I said, Kai, my own don't reach me. <laughs> How will I sleep tonight? I go back home. I said, hey, oh no. <laughs> <They're biting. laughs> so I sat down. And you know, I was still in school that time. I sat down, my head was on the wall. And what was it? I was waiting when they would come. They didn't send me a letter. I was expecting that be in their presence. So I sat down. If I doze, I said, lie, lie, no dozing. I see if it's a physical fight. <laughs> it's funny, but you see, I sat down. And because I've already planned my brain, by between 12 and 3, they do their meeting. So they would discuss me. They would, my, you know, I was calculating. <laughs> you are laughing today. I was not laughing that day. It was... It was me and me and my brain and Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost told me, he said, Don't worry, I've won for you. He said, Which Holy, Holy Ghost? Will. I beg. <laughs> That's the way I behaved. I'm telling you a real life story. And I waited. 
If I do, I say, so when I slept, by the time I woke up, I say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but two weeks after, they sent a snake to me. Whether to bite me or to kill me, I don't know. But as a snake was about to bite me, you know, I used to do money cry. Go to the street and preach. So one of my interpreters came around, smote the snake, and the snake became a human being. Okay, I'm not laughing again. Real life story, not that I conjured it. There's no conjured, I didn't conjure anything about it. Since that time, I knew that oh, more. <laughs> Doing work of God brings power into your life. Reaching out to souls is partnership with Jesus. That was 2003, 2002. And since that time, the miracle started. I like us to know that when you are a carrier of the gospel, you are a carrier of the power. Act 1, I mean Romans 1 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So gospel is power. Gospel is power. Gospel is power. I humorously told someone that she will carry um, she will carry the rug in my office to her house. He said, Hey, no, rug in office. Many demons have come. I said, Does it, does it mean they are here? <laughs> I said, the demons are not here. When they go, they go away. They don't stay here. I just say humorously, I said, carry the rug in my, in my office, take it to you. He said, lie, lie. <laughs> I will never take your rug. He said, your rug carry it. No, when they come, but the truth is this, so many spirits have left people by power. So many. In the same way, you carry what can tame the devil. You carry what can paralyze the devil when you are preaching the gospel. Everyone that carries the gospel carries God's manifest presence because the only John 4, John 6, 40, 48 the Bible says except they see signs they will not believe except you see signs so God will always prove himself as the one that sent by giving signs God will always prove himself as the one that sent by giving signs if you remember the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 17. Moses, God spoke to Moses. He said, take the rod in your hand with which thou shalt do signs. Which sign? Sign to prove I sent you. Sign to prove that you are not alone. Sign to prove that I'm the one in this assignment. When you are in God's assignment, there is a sign that backs up. There is a sign that backs the assignment up. Everyone on the assignment will always carry a sign. Everyone on the assignment of the gospel will always manifest the signs of the gospel. Everyone on the assignment of the gospel will always accept you are doing it so that God can bless you. But if you are doing it because you understand the assignment, you will not lack signs to prove it. Glory to God. Tonight, may we receive grace to be on the go for Jesus. May we receive the grace to be on the go for Jesus. But divine presence is sustained by doing always the things that please God. But divine presence is sustained by doing always the things that please God. Romans 8.29 The Bible says, For whom he did for no, he also predestinates to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. It's not enough to just carry his presence but to sustain his presence. Look at what I shared concerning that person that came to church on Sunday. She came to his presence, to church, enjoyed his presence, but when he left the church, he lost his presence. Nobody can tell what she doubled into. Nobody can tell what she started doing. Nobody can tell what she went to do. So it's important for us to understand the place of sustaining his presence and it's only by doing what pleases him. If you don't please God, he can't, you can't enjoy his presence. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that will come to him must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Those who pleasantly seek him. Those who seek him to, you know, to, to satisfy him. So if you are a God seeker, you will carry God's presence. If you carry God's presence, you will carry God's power. But seek him with all fear and reverence. With fear and reverence. 
Don't go and fornicate and come to church and still remain confident. Don't go and smoke and come to church and still remain confident. Don't go and, you know, do all kinds of stuff and come to church and still be excited. It shows you lack consciousness of his presence. No robber will steal in the, in the presence of a police. Why? He is conscious that they will arrest me. So if you, actually, if you are actually conscious of God, you will not be a sinner at ease in his presence. No robber will want to steal. No pickpocket boy or child will want to do that while there are, you know, multitude of police, policemen. No. Because he's conscious of arrest. Many lack the consciousness of God's presence. That's why they live in sin. It is. That's a big deal. But when you know that the one that will arrest you is there, you won't do it. It's because of lack of the consciousness of God's presence. That's why some people lie. They don't even feel they have lied. Because they can't even remember that God is there. Many fornicate. They don't even know they fornicated. You see, anyone that does such things and their conscience is not pricking them, they are dead. Why do they think they are alive? Remember? The Bible says, eat that liver in pleasure. is like a dead man while he's alive. When you think you are alive and you are living in pleasure that is pleasing your body against your maker, you're a dead person. So let's be conscious of the fact that, you see, God's presence, God's presence, God's presence, God's presence is a major factor for our existence as a believer. God's presence is a major factor for our productive and profitable existence as a believer. God's presence is a major factor for our profitable and rewardable and a successful existence as a believer. Who do we run to in the days of challenge? God. So please that God. Make that God happy. Make sure you don't, you don't, you don't hurt him. Make sure you are always enjoying his presence. From tonight, we will receive grace to please God in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, Act 10.38 how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that were sick or praise of the devil, for God was with him. And Romans 8, 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? So, I like us on Romans 8, 31, I like us to understand that his presence is all we need. His presence, but not just his dwelling presence, but his manifest presence. That is when God is presently present, not just presently watching. When they are killing some people, God is watching and they just die. When some demons are sucking some people's blood, God is watching and they just die. God is present, but he's not manifestly present, he's not evidently present in terms of manifesting his power. From tonight, we will not lack God's manifest presence in the name of Jesus Christ. What more? Divine presence is also sustained by a lifestyle of thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Remember Psalm 100 verse 4? Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, into his court with praise, and be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Every time we give God thanks, we give him opportunity to fill our thanks. Every time we give God thanks, we give God opportunity to fill our tanks. That is, what does it mean? Your tank of power, your tank of grace, your tank of blessing. Every time you give God thanks, you give him opportunity to fill your tank. Why? When we thank him, he comes down to receive our thanksgiving. And when he comes down, he sees the space, he fills it up with his grace. When it comes out, he sees the, the vacuum. He said, no, there can't be vacuum because I'm here. He fills it up. Every time we give our thanks, we give him an opportunity to fill our tanks. Maybe your business is hollow. He fills it up. Maybe your career is down. He fills it up. Maybe your business is crawling. He fills it up. No matter what it is. Because thanksgiving attracts his presence. Why? Psalm 20 verse 3. But thou art holy. Thou that inhabitest. 22 verse 3. That inhabit means he lives in. So when you are a thanksgiver, you are a God carrier. 
When you're a thanksgiver, that's why those who give God thanks continuously, they carry his presence continuously. Those who give God thanks continuously, they enjoy his manifest presence every time. Before they say, gee, he said, I'm here. Because thanksgiving has made him to be present before they even say, gee. Thanksgiving has attracted him before they even prayed. Thanksgivers are God carriers. And God carriers are mountain movers. Thanksgivers are God carriers. And God carriers are mountain movers. Thanksgivers are God carriers. When you are a thanksgiver, you automatically carry God's presence. And at his presence, mountains melt like wax. At his presence, mountains flow down. So, when you are thinking about you attract his presence. We shall not lose his presence again in Jesus' name. Say a better amen. amen. Psalm 16 verse 11. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness. Not partial. Not half. Psalm 16 verse 11. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So which means, everyone that carries his presence will always have pleasures forever. Pleasures forever. In the midst of heat-like situation, you see, enjoy God's, pleasure, God's pleasure. Why? His presence will always swallow up every pleasure. God's presence swallows up pressure. When they threw the three evil boys into the furnace of fire, God's presence swallowed the pressure. When lion, Daniel was being thrown in the den of, den of lion, God's presence swallowed the spirit of fear. The fear of our ah, lion left Daniel. And he entered majestically in the midst of his enemies. That's what the Bible says. He will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over because his presence. Why? The Lord is my shepherd. When the Lord is your shepherd, then God is presently present. So when you carry his presence, you carry his omnipotency. And his presence is being attracted by your praises. Your praises will attract his presence. His presence will generate his omnipotency. Omnipotency simply means all-powerful God. And he will always manifest himself. Tonight, being the third day of our waiting on the Lord, you will see God's power raw in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 